He's known for injecting a lot of fun mixed with sass into his work, and he's secured his spot as one of Anguilla's top stylists. Hi, I'm Carolyn Lee, content features writer at Yellow Media Jamaica, and today I'm catching up with LaShawn Rowan Hodge. Hi, LaShawn, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm well, thank you. And for our audience, LaShawn is an Anguillan stylist and image consultant. And today we're catching up on what he's been doing over the past year. So to begin, LaShawn, what sparked your interest in fashion? Well, I always like to mix and match clothes together. I've actually got my style from my dad. He's always, people always know my dad for always dressing in bright colors. I feel like I was also born with the same thing. So I always had a passion for fashion because of my dad. So that's actually where I got my fashion sense. So who encouraged you to make it into a career? Well, who actually encouraged me is my friends. Normally when we go to parties or events in Angola, they would always call me or we would be on a video call like how we are right now. And they would be like, hey Lash, hey Sean, what, what do you think could go with this black shirt? What do you think could go with this black dress? What shoes, what accessories do you think I could complement with this? And I would, from that, I would help them or we can go to different stores and we could look around to see what we find to complement the outfit for the event that is being held. And also my photographer, one of my photographers, Jonathan Gums, he actually pushed me to start this because I did not know how to start a business. I feel like a lot of people does that. They're not sure how to start, but you might just need that one person who push you. So he had a, uh, a photo shoot at a time and he asked me to start someone. And then that's how I actually got into doing this business and he created an Instagram because it was like, I don't know, I'm, I'm scared. I don't know what people would think. And so he actually created the Instagram account for me and he started posting things. And then it's like, I had to actually get on the platform to post some. I always post on my regular page, but when he pushed me to post on my styling page, I actually got more into, you know, the different styles and how to set up the Instagram page to make it attractive to people. So how long ago did you actually start this journey? Well, I started in, I started my journey in 2017. Um, I'm, I was not like how I am now because I was still like trying to find my way. I always would be on Instagram, I would be on Facebook, YouTube. I'm always watching like different music videos and stuff like that to get inspiration. So I actually started in 2017 just styling my friends for events it was not as popular as it is now than it was back then so yeah i actually saw my friends for the events that's how i actually get into it 2017 until now right so i would imagine that since then you know your confidence as a stylist has improved significantly what do you love most about your job what I love most about my job is that I get to work with different creatives from hairstylists, makeup artists, designers. I work close with a lot of designers. I have a lot of designer that's close friends. I could always, hey, can you do this for me? I need it for this date and they'll get it done. Also, is dealing with different personalities because not everybody is going to be bubbly. Not everyone is going to be confident. And that's also what I like to talk about today. I like to talk about confidence. I would want my clients to feel confident. They may be like, hey, I'm not sure if I should pose like this or if I should wear this. I don't know what people would say. And that's how I want people to find their style and, you know, switch it up a bit sometimes. I was about to ask you as well, you know, if somebody is not confident, if they're nervous, us and they're wondering you know will, will this look good on me does mm -hmm. it match my body type yeah kind of thing yeah how so, do you how do you deal with a client that's nervous about so those things? how do i deal with a client like that is that i would go to their instagram page i would see what they most likely would wear i wouldn't technically change their style fully I would just tweak it a bit to put in some of the style profile style with your actual style that you have before. And I would also like set up a mood board that has 
the um I would give you different options of clothing that you could choose from. So mm-hmm. I would put together a mood board that's gonna have the jewelry, that's gonna have the makeup look, that's gonna have the hair the hair look. I will put two different types or three different types and numerous types of different outfits that you could say, hey, I think I could do this or hey, I could think I could do that. So when they actually choose what they want, mm-hmm. I can tell them, okay, we can do this, but let's switch it up. Let's add this to it or let's add this pop of color. You know, probably for example, you're a melanin, dark skin person. I, lo- I love to see high tone colors on dark skin people. So you might say, oh, I don't know, I'm too dark. I don't think I would want to put on orange, but orange or green might make you, you know, blossom. Yeah. And you know, on the point of colors, you use you use a lot of vibrant colors. Yes, I love I love 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 colorful stuff. And you mentioned um, that you have a lot of designer friends. So, how outside of your designer friends, how do you source rare pieces for your clients? Well, that is tricky because I try to stay away from ordering things it is so difficult to get things here on island because it's sometimes you have to ship it to Miami and then it takes a week and then it comes here it, is, it, it takes too long and I don't have the patience to be waiting so I try to be me or my other friends we try to be crafty so if I want something done like a headpiece I might okay I could go to the shop I can get a different flowers to create a headpiece i could spray paint it i do a lot of diy stuff or things with hot glue gun anything with sewing i leave that up to my designers because me and sewing is not friends and that sounds like a really good way to do it as well to be innovative and come mm-hmm. up with own, yes. uh, original pieces that other people won't necessarily have anyway yes Mm -hmm. In 2017, you pretty much started off styling friends and now you're responsible for your personal brand, The Style Profile. Tell us a bit about that brand. So I would say the brand is resolves around, as I said before, confidence. It's all about confidence. It's all about being cool, vibrant, sexy, classy. If you want something dark, we could also work on those different things. But it's basically building confidence because I feel like that's something that a lot of people or women lack now is self-confidence. So that is basically what the brand is about. So build your confidence. You might wear something, you know, you might want something cool or classy, but you might still want it to be a little sexy. So you switch up your style. So that's basically what the brand is about. Are there any other stylists or image consultants that you draw inspiration from? Yes, there are other people that inspires me because there are a lot of people that is in the industry. I would say that there are a few stylists, but I can say that they're they're numerous because in terms of my seamstress, my seamstress and my tailor could also be stylists because they actually put the full look together and it's for me to enhance everything else. There are actually one person that I work close with sometimes she's one of my friends she she does more of personal styling and I actually get a lot of inspiration from her as well to mix in with my stuff sometimes I may hit her up and be like hey do you think this jewelry can go with this if I'm doing more of a personal style not a creative style I may hit her up and say do you think this jewelry can go with this do you think this emerald green can go with this red dress and she's like hey yes you can try this you you know don't be afraid to step out of the box so yes there are other people that inspires me on the island. Her name is Fabricia Webster and she goes by Crazed by Brie. Her styling page, page is Crazed by Brie. So last year you were a National Youth Award nominee for the Anguilla Department of Youth and Culture. How did you feel about being nominated? How did I feel about being nominated? I felt great that people was actually recognizing my work people was actually seeing me out there doing stuff people was actually seeing me walk alongside other people so it was it felt great that people was recognizing me for what i do in angola and it's not just oh he's a stylist oh you know he's just putting clothes on people they're actually seeing like the creative the creativity of what i do yes and lastly share a bit of advice for others who may be considering a career as a stylist or an image consultant. 
So some advice I would give someone who is interested in styling or image consultant, don't ever sleep on your ideas. I did that a lot of times. I have so much grand ideas. My friends always say this. They always argue with me for days. They're always like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You're saying that you want to do this, but you want to do that, but you don't actually do it. So I would say don't sleep on your ideas. 2021, 2020 and 2021 has showed me a lot during the pandemic to, you know, create, do stuff, build your ideas, start your business. So don't ever sleep on your ideas. If you know you want to start that styling business, if you know you want to be a makeup artist, go ahead. Don't be afraid of what people would say because people will talk good or bad even though you're doing good. So I would say just go for it and don't sleep on your ideas.